In this episode, I'm going to talk about why it is so important to interview with more than one company at once. It is essential to get potential employers competing for you. It is hands down the easiest way to negotiate your job offers and get the best compensation possible. This is Invincible Career, and I'm Larry Cornett. The balance of power has shifted in the job market lately. I don't know if you've been noticing. I don't know if you're in the job market, but it is completely changed. Employers used to feel like they held all the cards, and they were making candidates jump through hoops. I mean, it was crazy. I I remember talking to some hiring managers, and they They were so cocky about it. They would say, people should feel lucky to work here. They should do homework exercises that take days, if not weeks. They should feel blessed if we hire them. Well, the tables have certainly turned. The great resignation, as they are calling it, is definitely upon us. 4.4 million Americans quit their jobs in the month of September this year alone. 4.4 million. So companies are struggling to fill positions. I think there's something like probably more than 10 million positions that are open. And all those potential workers are looking at the meager hourly pay that they're offering and saying, nah, no thanks. They're not taking the jobs. So restaurants, retailers, other small businesses, they've all been reducing their operating hours. I've watched lots of local businesses close on more days than they ever have before. Some places have shut down entirely because they're so short-staffed. So as a job candidate in this really hot market, you now have the advantage. If you're good at what you do, it should be fairly easy for you to find multiple employers who would love to hire you. If you're in the market for a new job uh, and I could give you just one piece of advice, it would be this. Make them fight for you. You should be interviewing with more than one potential employer simultaneously. Speed up or slow down the process with each one so that you can time everything to receive multiple job offers. It's okay to tell an employer, hey, I need a few more days to consider your offer. I won't be making a final decision until I receive offers from the other potential employers too. There's nothing wrong with saying that. The best way to receive the best compensation possible is to negotiate intelligently and firmly But most people feel bad about it. They feel bad about pushing their advantage when they're in the driver's seat. And I get it. You're probably a good person. You feel bad about this. But there's nothing wrong with wanting an amazing job offer. There's nothing wrong with being a strong negotiator to get what you deserve. Let me tell you something. Employers certainly didn't feel guilty about taking advantage of the previous job market conditions to play candidates against each other, hire people at below market compensation, and give employees meager raises that didn't even keep pace with inflation. People have been essentially losing money for years. However, if the thought of tough job offer negotiations makes you feel a little queasy, a little sick to your stomach. You're not alone. It is one of the most stressful phases of landing a new job. It isn't easy to push back and ask for what you want in just the right way. It can often feel like some complex strategy game where you don't know all the moves and the consequences of what you're doing. I mean, after all, the interview process already is pretty painful. So now you're supposed to argue back and forth with a recruiter or the hiring manager about your offer. 
I mean, it's no big surprise that most people tap out and say, okay, fine. They just accept the offer and they settle for less. Because when you don't negotiate hard enough, you are settling for less. And that's unfortunate because every new job that you take is your most significant opportunity to boost your lifetime earning potential. Your biggest bumps in compensation and often your title, your level, will often happen when you have your best bargaining power. And when are you in the best position to bargain? Before you take the job. It's really, it's really hard after you've already started. For many of us, though, negotiation feels, it feels like conflict. It seems risky. If the other party gets upset and they walk away, we, we may lose the job. Or we do end up getting the job and now we fear that our new boss is already irritated with us and it's not, it's not good foot to get off on. <laughs> However, there is hope and that's why I created this podcast episode and I wrote this newsletter article. If you go to newsletter.invinciblecareer.com, there's a lot more information and links. This is Make Potential Employers Compete for You. So there is hope. There is a way to reap the benefits of negotiation, even if you feel like this isn't your strength. There is a much easier way to let other negotiation experts work on your behalf to get them to work for you. But how do you do that? Well, by leveraging the power of competing offers. So why do competing offers completely change the game? It's not uncommon for people to see their initial job offers increase their total comp by more than 50% when multiple companies compete for you. For example, during one of my negotiations, a company moved the role up a level to sweeten the deal. The competing company increased the stock options and doubled the signing bonus. I mean, they doubled it. It was insane. I was surprised by how easily this all happened when they began competing with each other versus negotiating with me. When I made my decision and I told the other company I wouldn't accept their offer, they bumped it up. I was like, no, no, really, I... I've already made my decision and they increased the offer even more. They simply couldn't accept that I had decided to take the offer from the other company. Receiving competing offers increases your confidence too. You see that you're in demand. You now know that you have options. It's kind of nice to be in that situation where companies are fighting for you. And it lights up your negotiation skills, which you may have thought you didn't have. Now, some people only want to interview with one company at a time. I've worked with clients who do that, no matter how much I tell them. And I warn them that this weakens their bargaining position. They're just so uncomfortable about setting up that competitive situation. And I think they also find it completely stressful to be interviewing with multiple companies at once. I mean, it is, it can be overwhelming. Now, you may be able to succeed in getting the best job offer possible if you already are a world-class negotiator. You're great at it. You're in the top 0.01% of your profession. You're at the top of your game. And you are in such high demand that any company would pay anything to get you. I've worked with a few people like that. They were in such demand that they could get whatever they wanted. But that's very, very few people. Most of us benefit greatly from a competitive process where the companies are pitted against each other versus directly negotiating with you. If you feel like you could use the support from someone or my community, for example, during this process, if you're going through it, I encourage you to check us out. I included a link in the newsletter. You go to newsletter.invinciblecareer.com. 
you can find out more about my career community. We've all been going through multiple job interviews and handled offer negotiations during our careers. And there are people in the community who've been working for 10, 20, 30 years. There are people in the community who are just getting started in their careers. And there are folks who are really advanced. I mean, they are directors, vice presidents. Some of them have been C-level executives, founded their own companies. They know how to interview and they know how to negotiate offers. So my community and myself, we're here to help you. We're here to help you get the best offer possible. I shared an example that one of our community members negotiated for 10K more in his base salary. And he got it. So you tell me, is spending $15 a month, investing $15 a month, worth an extra $10,000 every year. And it's like printing money. <laughs> it's like He's still in the community. He's been in the community for years. And that's why. Because working with us has made him a ton of money. Anyway, so let's get back to the interview and negotiation. So sometimes, you know, opportunity does come knocking. You don't have to go looking for it. That happened when I was at Apple. I was happy working at Apple. I wasn't looking around, but it wasn't perfect. It was stressful. Times were tight. Raises were really small because they said, hey, we're struggling. And they were. Apple was really struggling at that time. So raises were tiny. Promotions had slowed down. And so an opportunity did show up. And it was a really exciting startup. People I really enjoyed working with. I knew them very well. So I took the call. And I interviewed and I got an offer and the offer was so good that I really had no choice but to take it. It ended up being greater than a 50% raise, five zero, which uh, you can't really walk away from. Now I was pretty new to Silicon Valley at the time and I was pretty fresh out of school too. So I had not learned how important it was to interview with multiple companies at once, but I got lucky. That doesn't happen every time I got lucky and ended up working with one of the best managers I've ever worked for. And he did the right thing. He made me a fantastic, no hassle offer. And I look back at that and my career of 20 some years. And now I know that was rare (laughs) getting to know him better working for him. He's one of the best. That's a rare occurrence. So you don't want to leave it up to chance. So you may have reached a point where you are thinking about leaving your current job for one reason or another. And some of the most common reasons that people want to quit is they have a lack of a clear career path. Maybe they haven't been moving up. They haven't been getting promoted for years. Perhaps you're working for an incompetent boss. And no matter what, it doesn't seem to change. Or you feel like they really don't understand you and your true potential isn't recognized. They're not utilizing your talent. Or maybe you're working on something that just has no meaning. You feel like you don't have purpose. I felt like that. I remember working on some stuff. I was like, am I just working on an advertising platform? Is my job just getting people to click ads? It felt pointless. Or maybe you're unhappy with the corporate culture and the relationship with your coworkers. And it could be for a lot of reasons. So when you're looking for a new opportunity, if you're looking for a new job, that can be time consuming and it gets really chaotic if multiple companies are involved. So I get it. People are tempted to just follow the steps in sequence. They find a company, they get an interview set up, they interview, they do well, they get an offer, they negotiate, they have a counter offer. They receive the offer, they make a decision and you're all done or it doesn't work out. And so you're like, that didn't work out. So now I'm on to the next company. I start another round of interviews. That can take a long time. And it puts the entire burden of successful negotiation and doing the counter offer completely on your shoulders. The trick though, is when you turn this into a parallel process with multiple companies, 
and you'll have more than one offer to consider. So now, instead of negotiating with you, which is stressful and difficult, they're competing with each other. So before you start interviewing, line up multiple companies, line up multiple interviews, and try to align the timetable, you know, the timelines of these interviews. It's going to be hard. Just get stuff in motion. You want to make sure you're getting those offers and then you can delay the decision making long enough that you can get all the offers on the table. So I'm not going to talk about the interview process. I've written a lot in my newsletter. If you go to newsletter.invinciblecareer.com, I've written a ton of stuff about the interview process. You know, how to be successful, mistakes that people make, all the stuff that you can do to prepare. I'm not going to go into any more details about that. So let's talk about the negotiation. So I'm going to depart pretty radically from all the stuff you probably heard about negotiation from all the great articles that are out there, the books that already exist. I mean, I've gotten much better at negotiation than I was when I was younger in my career. And I've gained some of the confidence required to do that. But I, I don't feel like I'm some master negotiator that's going to give you better advice than some of the books that you can find on Amazon. I mean, I felt like I was pretty, I don't know if I want to say bad. <laughs> I, was, I was mediocre at negotiation. And I had to find a different way to do this because I knew I was getting screwed on my job offers if I couldn't find a way to sidestep that whole process. And I've talked about how important it is to bypass traditional methods before. There's a lot of stuff set up, for example, in the job application and job interview process. It's really to make life easier for the company, not you. And so I talk about finding a side door to come in to get a good job through your network. Same thing with the job offer process, negotiations. It's not structured to help you. But you know who's really talented at negotiating? Because they do it pretty much every day. Recruiters, hiring managers, they're making dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of job offers every year. They know the game. They know the rules. They're actually making the rules. And they know exactly where they can bend the rules and they can break the rules. So my strategy was to get multiple job offers, hopefully in writing, and let the companies battle each other. You need to get more than one company fighting to land you. Do it well, and they're no longer negotiating directly with you. And you are no longer held hostage to your negotiation skills, your confidence, and your risk tolerance, because it is, it is risky. So first, you know, be honest about what you're doing. You don't need to hide that you're interviewing with other companies. I just talked about this in a post and a video this week, maybe yesterday, day before. It's okay. You're in demand. You're going to be talking with multiple companies. There's no reason to hide that. I would hope that you're somebody who takes career moves seriously and you want to explore all of your options. And the best candidates always have multiple companies courting them. So let the recruiter and the hiring manager know that you are interviewing with multiple companies and you have other job offers you'd like to consider before you make a decision. However, and let me be clear, don't say that you have competing offers when you actually don't have them, when they're not in kind of your inbox yet. Some people play that game. They kind of lie about having a competing offer and I ran into that with a few candidates when I was a hiring manager, and it always backfires when someone's not honest. The industry is pretty small. People find out. People talk. So inevitably, the recruiter or the hiring manager, they're going to ask you what your current compensation is and what your salary expectations are. This is part of the whole negotiation process. They always do. And the general advice is to avoid being the first to state a number. 
during the whole process. It can trigger an anchoring bias, right? You say a number and then it starts to center the negotiation on that number. That's great advice. I hear it all the time, but some recruiters and I've encountered this and my clients have encountered this. They absolutely refuse to budge. They're not going to do it. And remember, they do this hundreds and thousands of times a year, much more than you do. So you probably already have a number in mind. I hope you've done your research. You've looked at competitive salaries for the role that you're considering, the level. Levels.fyi is a great resource for tech jobs. So check that out. You know, Glassdoor is okay, but the data isn't that great. Payscale, salary.com, those are also pretty useful resources. So come up with a range that is acceptable for you and then anchor yourself to the higher end of the scale. In the end, if one of the companies kind of gives you an offer that falls within your range, but another company gives you an offer that exceeds the range, guess what? That company, the first one, they're going to have to compete with that offer. Again, this is what's beautiful about this whole process. So maybe they anchored. Maybe they thought they could get away with hiring you for compensation within that range, but the game just changed. Another company just said, we'll pay you a lot more. So if that first company wants to stay in the game, They've got to compete with that offer. It's not about negotiating with you anymore. Another crucial thing to keep in mind is that everything, almost everything, is pretty flexible. So a company may decide to move your role up a level. They may say, you know, it was director, but what if we bumped it to senior director? And then another company might double your signing bonus. We're going to give you 50K as a signing bonus. Now it's 100K. And these numbers are not extreme. There's probably even higher signing bonuses now in tech. And almost every company can increase the stock options. So the conversation could go as follows. The recruiter's like, what are you currently making? What's your salary expectation? And you would say, if we both decide that this is a great fit, I'm sure we can be flexible. What is the salary band for this position? And a recruiter's going to be like, no, I'm sorry but I I need a number from you first so I can take it back to the hiring manager. We'll figure it out if we're even in the ballpark. And then you could come back and say, well, I'm certain that you're going to make me a competitive offer for this position. And the recruiter digs in their heels, but what are your expectations? Just give me a range. You can say, okay, I can provide you a range. I've done some research and I think somewhere between X and Y would be in the right ballpark. But, of course, I'll need to consider the offers I'll be receiving from other companies before I can make a decision. So now they are seeing that this isn't going to be a game where they just get to play within that range and negotiate with you. You're going to have other offers, and they're going to have to be competitive with those companies. You should also be professional. Always be professional and respectful. Don't use competing offers to threaten companies. Don't say anything like, well, I'd prefer to work for company ABC, so I'm going to wait for their offer. I can't believe, and this is, this is a true story, candidates say things like that. <laughs> you know, they're waiting for an offer from Google where they really want to work. And so then they're telling the other company, Salesforce, it's like, well... I really want to work at Google, so I'm going to wait for their offer, so I can't say anything about uh, your offer yet. Be ready for them to rescind their offer. So waiting for all the other offers to come in, it's the right thing to do for your career. It's okay to wait, and it's okay to be honest about that. It's okay to say, I'm trying to make the best possible career move and decision. The competing companies will definitely up their game once they know that you have other offers in hand. They'll accelerate things. That's why you want to take this approach. They may think that they have weeks or months to kind of drag it out. But if you have an offer, they better figure out what to do about that. So now, if they see that you have an offer, they're going to do their best to compete for you. And no longer just try to like edge slightly above your current job compensation. 
So they may be thinking, what if we just give you 5% more? It's like, well, you're not playing that game anymore. You now need to compete with the other company. And if they've gotten to this point where they're ready to make you an offer, they've invested a lot of time and energy. They don't want to risk losing you simply because they came in a few thousand dollars lower. So they're going to, they're going to do what they can to win you. So I want to remind you to be calm and logical about this. You want to make sure you have a complete offer before you formulate your counter offer. You want to have all the numbers in, not just the base. You want to make sure you understand the base, the bonus, you know, the stock options, all that stuff, signing bonus, so that you can make an apples to apples comparison. A complete offer also allows you to counter with a full proposal for how their offer can be improved to exceed your competitive offers. And you can suggest all the changes that you want. Make sure that it's a complete counter offer. Don't nickel and dime and say, well, if you could come up 10K on the base and they're like, okay, we're up 10K. And you're like, well, now I want a signing bonus. Okay, here's a signing bonus. Well, now I want a, a different level. They don't want to negotiate back and forth like that. So put together a complete counter offer. One of the most awkward phases is going to happen if you reply with your full counter and the company accepts. And now you're like, geez, that was too easy. <laughs> Should I have asked for more? And it's going to feel greedy to counter again, and you should not. I mean, if you make a full counter offer, that's you saying, I will sign the paperwork if you accept this. Now, the one caveat is that competing offers can solve that problem for you. So you may have been happy with that counter offer and you were getting ready to sign. And you told them, you know, I like that. I'm just waiting for the other offer and then I'll make my decision. But then the competing company comes back with an even better offer. So you could say, you know, I was excited. I was going to sign, but wow, company, uh, company ABC just came back with this offer. Can you do something to get closer to that? So what you want in your next job isn't entirely about the compensation, of course. You care about the work you'll be doing. You care about the leader that you'll be working for. Do you respect them? Is there someone who can mentor you? Are there colleagues that you'll enjoy working with and can learn from? Is there a career path? And it's easy to get dazzled by some big comp package and forget maybe some of the negative issues if you dug in a little bit more. So that's why I built a spreadsheet that really helps me look at all the factors that go into a job and all the factors that you should be considering when you're comparing two job offers or two or three. I linked the spreadsheet. I gave a special discount. So it's 50% off to the first hundred people that purchase it and download it. Um, linked in the newsletter, go to newsletter.invinciblecareer.com and you can find it. It has something like 38 factors that you should consider in addition to the base salary and bonuses and stock options and job title and all that kind of stuff. You want to make sure you're going to be happy about the job. You know, how much of an impact will your role have at the company? How talented is the team? You're going to be spending a lot of time with these people. Is it an A team that's going to help you grow or are you an A player going into a C team? What's the corporate culture like? Are there politics at the company? Would someone like you thrive there or are you going to suffer because it's so cutthroat? How do you feel about who your manager will be? Your manager's manager, the C-level executives, the board. It's important. Your boss can either make or break your career. It can be fantastic or it can be a living hell. So look up the leadership chain and make sure, are they good leaders? Do they make smart decisions? Take a look at the board. Do they have a track record of success? Do you respect them? Is it good for your professional brand? And then very importantly, think about what is the potential career, career path at the company for someone like me? One of the big reasons people quit jobs is the lack of a career path. So is there a career path 
for the role that you're going to be in? And more importantly, does someone like you have a chance at growing in the company? Is there a track record of someone like you being promoted? When I was comparing multiple companies several years ago, one of the companies had way higher total compensation. I mean, way higher. <laughs> but I, I could tell that the career path was going to be very limited. I knew, I knew people in the company. I knew that it was going to be a grind working there. And while the compensation was lower at the second company, the career path was great. And there were so many examples of people like me succeeding and moving up into higher roles and reaching the executive level, which I did. So it was a tough decision. I'm glad I made it. I didn't make the decision based on compensation. I made the decision based on my career mobility and it worked out. So, uh, I wish you good luck with your job search and your interviews and your offer negotiation. Just remember, don't decline an offer until you've signed the written offer for the job that you want. I have seen verbal job offers disappear at the last minute. It just happened a few weeks ago. I don't remember. I don't know if it's a leadership change or an org change or a reorg. Something happened to the requisition. They thought they had a job. They had a verbal offer. And when they said yes, they said, oh, sorry, sorry. The, the position closed. We can't hire you anymore. <laughs> so don't celebrate until you have formally accepted, signed the written offer and returned it. Once it's all kind of set, then you can tell the other companies, hey, I've already decided to take a different job with a different company. So I'm going to have to decline your offer. So I wish you the best of luck with your next career move. I hope that you will take this advice and take advantage of the power of multiple job offers. It will make your life easier during the whole negotiation process. It really will. Check out the spreadsheet that I linked in the newsletter and let me know if it was helpful for you. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you would like to follow upcoming releases of the show, please subscribe. And as always, I appreciate your ratings and reviews. Thank you. If you would like to learn more about Invincible Career and the podcast, you can visit InvincibleCareer.com. Until next time, I wish you the best of luck in becoming an opportunity magnet for the best things in life. <laughs>